What's up guys, Bob Buskirk here at Think Computers. I'm gonna be showing you a brief overview of SteamOS. Now this is SteamOS running on our Zotec Nen SN970 Steam Machine. So this comes preloaded with Steam Machine and preloaded with any Steam Machine that you buy, this is what you're gonna get. Um, so we're gonna do a brief little overview. This video might be a little bit long because we're gonna go into all of the settings and all that fun stuff. So just uh, stick with us and we'll give you our overview. So Starting here, we have our main screen, and this pretty much shows you everything that's you know going on in your system. You have all your notifications up top here. Um, we have our profile over here. We have web, store, library, community, and chat. And then down here, there's like you know just because we just uh, turned this Steam machine on, it says "Welcome to Steam," and it kind of gives you all this information. But a lot of times down there, we'll show you like your latest games or updates on games and things like that. So we'll start up here at our profile. And here is my Steam profile. You know, you can see all the information. You can, uh, see, you know, see recent activity and all the stuff that you've done here. Uh, you know, my screenshots, which will load here. You know, videos, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can actually go in and edit your profile as well um, from here. So if you want to change something on your Steam profile, you can do it all within the Steam machine or all within Steam OS. You don't have to do it on the web or anything like that. Now we'll go over to the top here, and here. R is like the new for you uh, type thing. It's sort of just like shows you, you know, some things that are on sale right now, what they think you'll like on Steam. Um, you have all of that. We have our messages here. Uh, these are actually alerts. So 107 new comments because I never check my comments. Four inventory, four inventory items and restart to update SteamOS. So it looks like I need to restart to update this. Here we have our downloads, so I don't have anything downloading currently, but it just shows you what just finished downloading, um, and you can go ahead and search a library and, and see all the stuff that you recently downloaded in this tab. Over here we have our settings, and we're going to go into these last, um, but this is all of your settings. And we have power. So this allows you to, one, I have desktop mode enabled so I can easily switch to the desktop mode. I can log out of my Steam account. I can turn off my controller. I can restart my system and I can turn off my system. And of course we have the time, which one thing that's really weird about the time on this is it's not right. It is uh, 6.30 p.m. and it says it's 2.35 a.m. Even when I change my time settings, uh, it still doesn't change, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, had that exact same problem on the Alienware Steam Machine as well, so not really sure what that's about. But uh, we'll go to our main tabs here, so you just go down. And uh, by the way, I'm controlling all this with uh, Steam Controller. So uh, you can see it's really fluid and really easy to move around. So first we have web. So this does have a built-in web browser. So you can easily go to uh, any of these, you know, they have Google, Twitter, you can add a favorite. You can just go to any, any site you want, but I had Reddit up earlier. So you can see where we can go to Reddit and, you know, you can scroll down the page and see what's going on. And, you know, if you're just sitting on the couch and you want to check out the internet, you can do it. There is a browser built in and it works pretty well actually. So we'll go out of that and we'll go to the store and of course this is where you can buy your games. That's the, the joy and the great thing about SteamOS if you're coming from say a console or something like that is that you can download, game, download games instantly and start playing them. So um, this version of the store is only showing stuff that is supported on SteamOS which is nice. Um, because before they before their it was like probably a couple months ago they didn't have it so it would just show only Steam OS titles it was really weird that it didn't but uh, they've updated that now so only Steam OS titles and of course you can go into the game or go into each one and you can see uh, showing the video here and then I can go down here and I can easily buy it add it to my cart uh, download it and I'm ready to play was it's really great about Steam OS it's just Steam in general is if you're bored and you want a new game you can go on and just buy a game. So we'll go out of the store and we'll go into our library here. Library here, and uh, library is just what you expect. This is all of your games, and um, it actually shows you games that are installed on other uh, game or on other systems on your network that have Steam installed. So Rocket League is not uh, Steam OS supported, but I can stream it. So that's something with the Steam machines is that if you have another system on the network that has Steam, you can actually stream games from that. So not all games are on Steam OS. That's one of the downfalls, which I talked about before, is that we don't have a lot of titles uh, that are Steam OS compatible. So this kind of 
alleviates that if you do have another computer on the network that has Steam, you can play these games. Um, but just, you know, this shows you your recent games here, um, installed games, you know, and you can go in and easily say, I want to play, I don't know, Broforce. I can go in and play. And I can, sh it says more ways to play. If I wanted to, I can actually stream it as well. So this is a new thing that they've added since my last SteamOS video is that even, even if I can play it locally, I have the ability to, to stream it as well, which is kind of cool. So if you, you know, your Steam machine is not super powerful or something like that, um, you know, you can play it from another system, which is pretty cool. So we will go out of there and into the community tab. And the community tab, for some reason, recently has gone really slow as you can see it's loading here um, I'm really not sure why uh, it takes so long to load these days not exactly sure but in here is just like content that's going on in the steam community and this is my suggested content which again is taking forever to load for some reason um, and this is all content which again takes a long time to load friend activity actually loads pretty decently this is you know all of the activity with my friends and my groups and uh, you can select a specific game hub so if you want to look up news and events for a certain game you can go ahead and do that um, and you can view your profile view your friends list and view your inventory here as well so I'm not really sure why uh, the suggested content takes forever to load and still not loading for some odd reason um, but that's not super important to your gaming experience obviously and then we have chat over here and you can see all my friends that are online and I can go ahead and chat with them if I want to and just say what's up and you can do this all of course you know sitting on your couch which is pretty cool so now we're gonna go into our settings here so there's a lot of settings going on as you can see so first is your account settings um, this is everything that's going on with my steam accounts you can see my name email um, you know my back status I'm not a cheater so it's in good, it's a good status um, you can change your contact email and you can manage your Steam Guard and you can save your account credentials. So if you're on a Steam machine that has a bunch of people using it, you want to make sure this is not selected so people don't log in as you. Under friends, um, you can just get, you know, this is where all of your uh, settings are for your friends. So if you want to, if somebody joins a game, it will display a notification on the screen. When a friend comes online, you can have a display notification or play a sound. And when you receive a message, the same thing. And you can view your Steam community profile, which, uh, which we showed you earlier, which is just your normal profile. Down to controller. Now, the uh, Zotec Steam Machine does come with one Steam controller, um, which I'm a huge fan of this controller, actually. I use it a lot, even on my main PC. Um, but that dongle that it comes with supports up to four controllers. So here, you can easily add a Steam controller. Just hit Add Steam Controller. Um, it will show you the detected controllers. Again, we only have one here, so you can see it. And actually, the, uh, what they recently added is you can kind of... Um, save all your stuff on the controller itself. Um, so the registered account on this controller is Enigma 5, which is pretty cool. Um, you can turn off, turn off Big Picture on exit, uh, and you can shut the controller uh, off at certain times, which I think this is new as well. So what they've done is the Steam controller um, uses batteries, which is the one downfall of it. So you can easily uh, turn it off after a certain amount of time, a certain amount of downtime, um, which is cool. So uh, it will auto turn off, which I like. Configurations. Um, so the only configuration that that's, is here is the desktop configuration. And this kind of shows you what the configuration is all about. Now, one thing that's really cool about SteamOS and the Steam Controller in general is there's a community of people making configurations for games. Um, so a lot of games that are available on SteamOS aren't natively made for a controller. They're made for a keyboard and mouse. But a lot of people actually make configs, and you can actually browse those configurations. Um, you know, uh, different community configurations. You can see how many people are using them. You can you know go through and you can download them. And these are not only for the Steam machine in general, but for games too. So it's really cool. I really like that feature. That's one thing that's great about Steam because it is a community. You have a lot of people creating things for it. Um, so this is just one really great thing that has to do with the controller. Um, on-screen keyboard. This is just all your on-screen keyboard settings um, and your your uh, language. So you want to make sure that's set to English. Display again, you can set your language here, which again we have as English interface. Um, this is where you can enable and enable and disable the Linux desktop mode. So, again, if I want to go into Linux for some reason, um, I can actually do that. Uh, just hold in the 
the middle button on the controller and hit on switch to desktop mode. Really easy to do. Um, and then you can enable offline mode shortcuts, screensaver timeout, 15 minutes, and the, the screensaver. There's uh, two different screensavers in here. So, you know, if you do have an older LCD for some reason and um, bleed in is a big thing that happens with those older displays, you there is a screensaver. So it doesn't, one, it's not using as much power. Two, you're not going to get that bleed in on the screen. And then resolution here, you can kind of just adjust your resolution. So if you get a new display or something, you can set that up. We'll go over to audio interface. So this is just all your audio settings and, and how loud you want things. And you can mute all the sounds and just gives you information on the audio settings as well. Um, you know, just easy to see there. Under music, this is just all your music volume and you can actually um, scan for soundtracks and set up you know music that you can actually play on the system mm -hmm. and for voice uh, we have auto transmit my voice uh, you can have a push to talk key if you want to if you have a microphone connected and all of that no microphone connected uh, so this is test microphone it won't really work mm -hmm. under steam overlay um, you can set different things for the steam overlay to uh, be set up on the system so if you're playing a game and you want to jump back into steam real quick uh, this allows you to you know do that web browser this is just your web browser settings default search engine uh, delete all your browser cookies and I believe that's history as well I'm not sure if it's just cookies um, but if you're looking at something you shouldn't be and you want to delete your tracks you can go ahead and do that broadcasting this is the broadcast settings so I do believe you are able to broadcast from uh, Steam OS, but I haven't really tested it. Um, that's another downfall about Steam OS is that it's very hard to install third-party software because it is Linux. Um, so, like you know, other so other broadcasting software is hard to get on here. So I'm not really sure if this actually works yet or not. In home streaming, this is what I talked about before. This allows you to stream games from other systems. So you can see we have our other system on the network, and you can enable and disable uh, streaming, and you can set the uh, settings so really fast, uh, balanced, and then beautiful. So really fast would be lesser quality. Balanced is what we have is the best quality and the best um, best quality and the best uh, transfer. And then under beautiful will be the, the really best quality that you can do, which will, will consume a lot of uh, a lot of bandwidth there. And then you have advanced client options, which we can go into, and you can set everything. You can limit resolution and limit your bandwidth and all that kind of stuff. Going out of there, we have family view. Um, you can use this with the family view account, uh, you, which you can go ahead and set up. And then family library sharing, um, you can do this. You can authorize this computer to be part of the family library share. And then under system, we have our downloads again, which we can we, we showed you earlier. Um, this just is all the settings for your downloads. So you can set your download region, which I definitely need to change. Uh, let's see here. Let's do Columbus, Ohio is pretty close. So we'll change that. Uh, we're not going to set that yet. <laughs> but uh, we can limit your bandwidth. You can auto, you know, limit auto updating schedule. So if you don't want an update to happen during the day or something like that, um, you can throttle downloads while streaming and loud downloads during gameplay, which will actually enable that. Um, so you can have all that set up. So, you know, you don't want this enabled if you're playing a game and you downloading at the same time, it could slow you down and things like that. Mm -hmm. Under network, um, it just shows you all of your network settings and you go and configure everything as well. Bluetooth, you can set up uh, Bluetooth. So if you have, say, a Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse you want to use with this, or a Bluetooth headset, you can go ahead and easily pair them using this. Yeah. Under system, this shows you all of uh, all of the information on your system and everything like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to, uh, to see everything. And uh, for the person that commented on our last video saying that we were just running Steam in big picture mode, it says SteamOS version, so we are running SteamOS. Um, this shows you all of the, the hardware information, and we're partic participating in the client, which means we'll get all the client builds uh, as soon as they're out. And you can check for updates and view update news as well. Time zone, this is what I talked about before. Even if I change this, uh, so I'm on, I'm on minus five for Eastern Standard, but I'll go to, say, Pacific Standard. That should technically change the uh, time in the top, and it doesn't for some reason. Disk management, 
um, it just shows you how much space you have left and how much each game or each thing that you have is taking up. Um, so you can see how much space is being used and how much space you have left, which is good in case, you know, you're getting close to filling up your hard drive. You can kind of move things out and you can easily click on something and uh, manage it and delete it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then add library shortcut allows you to, this is all the applications that are on Linux, uh, terminal and, and all that kind of stuff. And you can actually add them within steam. So you can actually launch them in the, uh, in steam. You don't have to go back into the Linux desktop. Um, one other thing that I did want to show you, which I just totally forgot about when I brought it up is if you go into a game here, you click on manage game. And here you can do a lot of different stuff. You can set your update options. You can launch, uh, set launch options, set language. Um, you can add it to your favorites. You can change the icon. You can do different stuff like that. And here's the controller settings. Um, so again, this, this shows you your controller setup, but you can actually browse configurations for this game. So this is what I was talking about earlier. You can see Team Fortress 2 defaults, but there should be some community ones. Um, and you can see how many people are using these. So this person called there is probably the best. And uh, this is made for Team Fortress 2. And you can see there's a bunch of different ones here with the, the amount of people using them. So usually the ones with the most users are the best for that game, which is pretty cool. Um, so that is basically it here for SteamOS. Um, sorry for such a long video, but I did want to cover everything. It, it's great as a console replacement. Um, the controller is awesome as well. The interface is really easy to use. Um, if you ever use Steam in big picture mode, it's pretty much the same except for you're running on Linux. And uh, we're sitting here obviously in uh, my living room rather than sitting in my office, which is kind of nice as well. So if you have any questions about Steam OS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Till next time, catch you guys later. Thank you.